Well, good morning, everybody, and a really warm welcome uh, to you all as you join us for our morning worship at All Saints. Uh, a warm welcome to everybody here in the building and to those of you who are watching our live stream. It's great to uh, join together in worshipping the Lord this morning. Uh, and this morning, a particular welcome to uh, Bex, who has joined us this morning um, from the Family Trust. And uh, we're really looking forward to Bex sharing with us this morning about uh, the work of the Family Trust, who, of course, we, uh, is one of our partners who we support through prayer and finance. And uh, we're really looking forward to hearing uh, more about uh, what the Family Trust uh, are up to at the moment. So uh, great to have you with us, Bex. The risen Lord Jesus, just before he uh, went to heaven, when he ascended to heaven, uh, spoke to his disciples and he assured them, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. I will be with you always. So just before we begin our time of worship this morning, uh, let's just take a moment uh, reflecting on the fact that Jesus, the Lord Jesus, is here uh, with us, present here in the building, present in our homes. So let's take a moment just to uh, focus ourselves on him and to prepare as we worship him. There should be some words coming up on the screen in our opening prayer. As you promise to be with us, Lord Jesus, we welcome you here today. We say together, help us, Lord, to worship you, to listen to your word, and to pray in faith that we might grow in our love for you and for one another. Amen. So the Lord is indeed here. He's moving in our midst. And we're going to worship him with our opening song, Waymaker. So for those of you at home, you can sing your hearts out in praise to the Lord with this song. Uh, for those of us in the building, we might not be able to sing here, but we can sing in our hearts. So let's uh, praise him and offer ourselves to him in worship. Waymaker. <laughs> I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every I worship you, I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. 
my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise people light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. 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 you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, even when I don't see it, you're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working, you never stop, you never stop working, you never stop, you never stop working, we make miracle work, promise in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work, a promise keep a light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 Lord, we thank you that you are here working among us. It's your desire to heal and to mend our hearts, to forgive us when we've fallen short of your ways. And so, Lord, we pray you would help us now to open our hearts to you, to be really honest with you, to allow you to search our hearts so that we can come and repent and say sorry and receive your forgiveness. So we're going to join in a prayer of confession on the screen. We say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So we join in the special prayer for this Sunday. We say together, God, our light and our salvation, illuminate our lives, that we may see your goodness in the land of the living, and looking on your beauty, may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as we've said uh, a bit earlier in the service, it's great to have Bex here with us from the Family Trust. And uh, Bex, we're gonna, I'm going to invite you to come up now. And uh, Bex is going to share, first of all, with us about the work uh, of the Trust at this time. Um, and then a little later on, Bex is going to open up God's Word uh, to us. So, Bex, do you want to come on up? Over to you. audience work a little bit this morning but we're going to start nice and easily okay right so let me just find my clicker and make sure that this is going to work that looks hopeful do, 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 do. just hold on a second <laughs> we'll give it a moment 
There, yeah, that looks good. Okay, so the Family Trust. Has anybody here heard of us? Oh, that's a really, really, I'm not going to count you. <laughs> okay, wonderful, that's a really good start. Can anybody here tell me what we do? Yes. Do you want to come up here and do the presentation? <laughs> yeah, that's it, exactly. Um, we are a children's work charity. Um, you can see on the screen our new tagline is inspiring the next generation to explore Christianity. That's what we are about. You're right, we work mainly in primary schools. So that's what we do, or in fact, that's kind of what we did, okay? So what we did, you can see here, this is a map of Kent. We did, we had three offices. We had one in Medway, one in Maidstone, and one in Swale. And those three offices between them, they covered, in Medway, there were 65 schools that we are invited into, that we have connections with. In Maidstone, 69 schools. And in Swale, 36 schools. So altogether, 170 schools have their doors open to us that we visit regularly for many of those things. So as you said, what we do, under the Family Trust banner, which is our primary school work, we do assemblies. So some schools call it collective worship, going in once a term, bringing the word of God. We do a story, a song, generally some kind of fun game or something like that, a prayer that we bring to the school children. Um, King Squads, as you said, that's our um, club, sometimes at lunchtime, sometimes after school. One of our King Squads is at all Saints Primary School, just here, it's on a Friday after school, or rather I should say, it was. Um, we also do CAP Money Kids courses, I'm sure you've heard of CAP, Christians Against Poverty. They have, alongside their excellent adults work, they have children's money courses as well, which we've been delivering over the past two, three, four years. Um, again, we've done some of those in All Saints. Um, Christmas events. They might be lessons. Um, more recently, they've taken the form of whole school events in the school hall. Um, in Maidstone, we call them a pantomime. Here, we've called it the nativity show, so Christmas events as well. Easter events, again, generally they take the um, form of lessons with individual classes. RE lessons as well, a bespoke kind of RE lesson. A school will sometimes get in touch with us and say, could you do us a lesson on Pentecost or on the Trinity? So that's something else that we will do. Uh, prayer spaces, um, that can be a longer event or just a shorter one for an hour or a prayer space lesson, something along those lines. That's our family trust, our primary school um, branch of what we do. Secondly, CAST, that's our secondary school arm. It stands for Churches and Schools Together. At the moment, that's just been in Maidstone, but what CAST do is mentoring very popular for children of secondary school age. We will send volunteer mentors in for them to have someone to talk to. Prayer spaces, again, very popular in secondary schools. Um, focus days, where we will go in for a day and we'll teach, we'll do sessions on a particular subject. Safe spaces, exactly as they sound, a safe space for children, for students to go, to have someone to talk to, to just be, have some time out sometimes. And also, again, we've done a few Cat Money youth courses. And then, as you said, finally, Check and Tree Camp, which we run in the summer, or we have run in the summer, two different weeks. Children can come. It's a residential camp, although last, last but one year, we did some day camping activities as well. So that's what we did. But then, of course, back in March, COVID happened. Um, our last event in a school building was on Wednesday, the 18th of March. So how does a school's work organisation work when we're not allowed into schools? It's a good question. So that's where we come to what we are doing now. We were furloughed, we are now back. We've had a little bit of a reorganisation. So now, instead of our three offices, we now have two teams instead. We have an online team and an on-site team that do exactly what they say. One's online, one's on-site. 
So our online team, they've been very, very busy recently, adapting, changing, as I'm sure you've had to as well. So our online team, they are producing at the moment weekly assemblies, shorter eight, ten minute assemblies that are being um, produced weekly that schools can access via YouTube. If you're interested, I'd invite you to have a look, a search for our YouTube channel, and please subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, <laughs> um, and have a look at our weekly assemblies. Um, we're also in, uh, we've got plans in the pipeline for doing a Christmas movie, which is going to be called No Zoom at the Inn. Um, hopefully should be lots of very, very bad jokes in it. Um, but again, that will be available online. Um, we're also thinking about the possibility of doing what I've put here. It says daily shorts. We're not quite sure what form this might take. Some kind of wake-up, shake-up kind of event that might be just a two-minute slot that schools can access every day. Something along those lines, maybe. And another thing that we're thinking about is whether we can um, make some stories accessible and available for churches to use, for their children's work, for their Sunday schools, that kind of thing. So that's our online team. As I say, they've been very busy adapting, changing, getting all these things in place. Our on-site team, which I myself am part of, um, we are, as of the week after this coming one next term, we are starting to go back into schools. So we're going to be doing our normal assemblies, slightly adapted. We'll be sending one person instead of two. We're adapting the things we do to make it COVID secure, obviously. But we're really looking forward to getting back into schools after half term. We've also taken the opportunity to do some more bespoke RE lessons. Schools that are happy to have us in, who've offered um, for, for us to come, we're doing more RE lessons next term um, for certain schools. So that's a good opportunity too. Um, we've also planned and we're preparing Christmas lessons. Again, they won't be whole school events this year, but they will be more bespoke, more specific lessons. Um, in January, we will restart our Cap Money Kids courses. Um, lots of those already booked. And the last one on our list really is King Squads. King Squads, we're not quite sure how that's going to work. Um, it's lots of children coming together. We're hopeful of restarting, maybe some kind of online provision, but hopefully from January onwards, we're hoping to restart our on site King Squads. So that's what we did, that's what we're doing now. Last of all, opportunities and challenges. So, good things that have come out of this, some good opportunities that we've had. I've spoken about them already. First of all, our online provision means we can reach a wider audience. It's online, it's on the internet. Um, I would imagine that you yourself as a church have found similar, that people are accessing your online things from far away. We've had even people as far as Durham looking at our um, weekly assemblies. Um, we're also being, having the opportunity to go deeper with our lessons. Like I said, we're doing more RE lessons. Normally, we don't have the time to do lots of those. It's been nice to take some time to plan them to next term to go in and deliver some deeper lessons. We've got new ways of working, and we're learning new skills. We've learned very, very quickly um, how to um, create, how to film, how to edit, how to perform in front of a camera, all of those things. It's not been easy, but these are new ways of working. Um, we're looking at, um, again, new teams. We've been moved into these new teams, and so that's, again, a good opportunity to work with different people. We've been asked about the possibility um, from an organization called Homestart about delivering CAP money courses to children as young as four and five. That's an opportunity that we're investigating at the moment. And we're also thinking about maybe expanding our mentoring provision and our secondary school provision to maybe other geographical areas, because at the moment that's only been in Maidstone. So those are all the really good opportunities and things that have been happening for us. But, as I said, challenges. And this is where if you want to help us, please pray for these things. And um, we're all undergoing challenges. But for us particularly, we've had a number of our team members who've moved on to other things. So that's been a bit difficult to, to deal with. Um, there's been, we have our associates and volunteers who work with us. We've had no work for them. So they're struggling with loss of work, loss of community, loss of finances. Um, our Swale office has been closed. There's no need for it at the moment. So that's been a loss that, again, we've had to come to terms with. Um, this is a really big one for me. Less engagement with actual children 
Um, that's what we do. Children are at the heart of everything we do. We are a children's work charity, and we've had very little engagement with actual children, and we miss it. So we're very excited next term about going back in. Um, the fact, as I said a minute ago, that we are learning as we go along. Very, very steep learning curve, which is a good opportunity, but it is also a challenge. And um, again, an opportunity, also a challenge. The new teams, new people, new ways of working. And finally, as we're all coping with, the general challenges that are um, um, created by COVID. Um, so not seeing family and friends, mental health, those kinds of things. So that's a short presentation about us and who we are, what we do. As I said, those challenges, those things I've mentioned, if you would like to pray for us, those would be really good things for you to pray for. Thank you. Bex, thank you so much for uh, sharing um, about uh, the work of uh, Family Trust and Cast. Um, and, uh, I it's really inspiring to see how, as an organisation, uh, you've been adapting um, and changing things around so that your work can continue and, and the opportunities that have been presented. Um, but also, it's really helpful for us to, to see some of the challenges as well, to hear about those challenges so that we can be praying. And a little later on in our service, uh, Stuart will be leading us in some prayers, which will include prayers for the Family Trust. I, uh, about probably a couple of years ago, I went to uh, one of the prayer spaces that was held at uh, All Saints Primary School, um, and it really was so inspiring, uh, seeing not just the children, but uh, some of the staff as well, um, really sort of engaging with uh, the materials and uh, yeah, really engaging in prayer with God. Uh, so thank you so much for what you shared this morning, and we're looking forward to uh, uh, you sharing God's word in a little bit. We're going to um, worship with another song, uh, and uh, this is one that we recorded for our praise party, I think back in July, Shine. Now, for those of you at home, uh, you can sing and do some actions. For those of us here, uh, I thought this is an opportunity for us to do some actions if you want to. Um, it's going to be a bit strange, I think, but... Uh, I think you know, we know we can use our bodies. We might not be able to sing in the building, but we can use our bodies. So I'm going to try and remember. They, the actions will be all up on there, okay? It's me, so it's a bit embarrassing, but never mind. Um, so, but just to, to kind of show what the actions are, if I can remember them. So shine from the inside out that the world may see <laughs> you live in me. Shine from the inside out, that the world might see, you live in me, okay? And then, you know me, you love me, fill me, so send me, okay? And then there's a bit where you go, know me, love me, fill me, send me, okay? So, uh, yeah, just join in as and you can. Uh, if you don't want to, if you just want to listen, please do. And for those of you at home, or you can sing and do the action, so... Uh, let's, uh, if we can have the song up, that would be great. And if you want to stand, please stand. But if you want to remain seated, please do. Shine from the inside out, that the 
everybody yeah I, I think we were having fun hopefully so <laughs> I was even if I did forget the words and uh, the actions now and then fantastic well we're going to uh, listen to um, God's word now Rachel is going to come up and uh, read to us um, so Rachel if you'd like to make your way up we have just uh, one reading this morning from Matthew Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Today's reading is taken from Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 40, the greatest commandment. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees and the Pharisees got together, one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with a question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We're going to invite Bex to come back up and to uh, yeah, offer God's word to us this morning. Bex, over to you. Yeah. Right. As I said, we do like a bit of participation. Okay, so you've been warned. Um, who can name for me one of the Ten Commandments? Or who can, who can give me one of the, what are the Ten Commandments? Anyone? Don't mind. Um, yes, in the middle. Thou shalt not kill. Excellent. Anybody got any others? Yeah. Love thy neighbour. Wonderful. Any more? We'll take one more, maybe? Go on then. Honour your mother and father. Excellent. Okay. So those are the Ten Commandments. Now, I'm sure you will already know this. Okay. Ten Commandments are divided, really, into two main groups. One about our relationship with God, how we love God, and the other group about our relationship with other people, with our neighbour, how we love our neighbour. And the reading that you've just heard from Matthew 22, that's exactly what Jesus says there. He's talking about loving God and loving your neighbour. Now, another thing that we like at the Family Trust is we like some props and we like a little bit of interactivity. So I have some here. So we have two stone tablets. We've got love God and we've got love others. I couldn't fit love your neighbour on there. Love God, love others. Okay, so those are our two groups. Those are our two most important commandments, loving God and loving others. Now, before we get into that too much, I just want to make it clear that we're talking here about love as an action, not just love as a feeling. Love is a feeling. It's that feeling you get inside of, of how you feel and the emotions. But in this situation, in this example, it's an action. It's about doing things, showing love, demonstrating love as an action, something you actually do. Okay? So, as I said, a bit of participation. First of all, loving God. First greatest commandment. How can we love God? That's actually a question. I mean, I do have some thoughts myself, but if anybody's got any thoughts, how can we love or show our love for God? Any thoughts? Yes. 
Oh, very good. Obey his commandments. Yes. I'm going to write it on my stone tablet. Okay. It's going to be a bit small, but hopefully you'll be able to get the idea. Very good. Obey his commandments. Anything else? What have you done this morning? You have... Yes. Pray. Yep, very nice. Any other thoughts? Yes. Worship and praise. Yep. Anything else? Yes. Reading God's word. I think you've pretty much covered the whole list that I had. Reading God's word. There we go. And we've pretty much filled up our stone tablet. So those are really good examples of how we can love, love in action, how we can love God. Okay. What about loving others? How can we love others? others. Any thoughts? Yep. Showing kindness. Showing kindness. Yep, that's good. I'm sure that during the last few months, some of you have been doing this kind of thing. You've been showing ways that you can love other people. Has anybody made a phone call to someone? just to see how they're getting on. Yeah, that's a way. That's a practical way of showing loving other people. So I'll put that on our list as well. Okay, any other thoughts? Yeah. Praying for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Sharing our, our wealth. Yep. Sharing our wealth. Forgiving them, that was on my list as well. That's less of a practical thing, but you're right. It's definitely a way of showing love for others, forgiving them, even if you think they may not necessarily deserve it, but forgive it, forgiveness, definitely. There we go. I filled up my other stone tablet. So we've got showing kindness, making phone calls to people, just checking in with them, seeing how they're getting on, praying for others, sharing our wealth, forgiveness. They're all really good ways of loving other people and we've had some really good opportunities over the last few months for doing that. Now both of these things, loving God and loving others, they're both really really important obviously but this is the thing, neither one exists without the other. If we love God we must love others If we love God as an overflow from that, wanting to do God's will, wanting to keep his commandments, wanting to be like him, to be like Jesus, we want that overflows and demonstrates in the way that we can love others. Because loving God without loving others isn't really loving God at all. And if we love others, it's because we actually love God first. Even if we might not actually completely see it that way. Jesus himself says in Matthew 25 verse 40, he says, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So when we love others, when we do those things, we are doing it for God. We're doing it as a demonstration, as an overflow of our love for God. An expression of love for other people reflects God and his love for us. I found this on the internet. This is a good, this phrases it much better than I can. Um, Father David Stavarts, I think is how you say it. He's a priest of the Diocese of Cleveland and he said this, we cannot love God fully without loving our neighbor. And we cannot love our neighbor fully without loving God. As we love God more, we love our neighbor more. And as we love our neighbor more, we love God more. One flows from and into the other. It's like a circle. It's going to go round and round. Now, here is the bit where I'm going to do something, hopefully, very clever if it works. So we have our two stone tablets here. 
And this is my, I like a good visual representation of things. And hopefully this will work and we will get a good visual representation. So we've got loving God. Loving others. Hopefully this works. And they should. This is a representation of how they fit together. They are interlinked. <laughs> and when they interlink, like so, they will make a heart. Kind of. Thank you. It's just, as I say, I like a visual representation, and it's just to show us how they weave together, love for God, love for others, go together to demonstrate that love. Now, what I would like you to do is I would like you to have a think, just to yourselves, about these two different things we've spoken about, about loving God, loving other people. Maybe you've been challenged by one or other of these things. Perhaps there's something that God's telling you now that perhaps you need to do more of or perhaps do a little bit differently. So I'd like you to have a think about that. Talk to God. Ask him what it is he wants to show you. And after a few minutes, I'll finish, I'll close with a prayer. Okay? Lord God, we pray that you will show us this morning ways that we can love you more and ways that we can love other people more. Help us to do these things. Amen. Well, thank you so much, uh, Bex. What a wonderful illustration that is. I don't think any of us will forget that, uh, of the, that uh, command to love God and love neighbours coming together in that heart of love. Uh, so thank you, Bex, for really opening up God's word to us this morning and uh, for praying with us and for us that we might uh, really apply what we've learnt this morning and thought about in our lives. Well, a moment, uh, I'm going to ask Stuart to uh, come and lead us in our prayers, uh, but first we're going to affirm our faith. So uh, if uh, you're in the building, if you'd like to stand and uh, let's declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So uh, please do be seated, and uh, going to ask Stuart to come and lead us now in our intercessions. Stuart.
Thank you, Bex, very much indeed for that really lovely presentation. It was very thoughtful and it reminded me of my past and hopefully my future. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the gift of your holy word, which we ask you to teach us so that we may be ready to serve you. In your holy word this morning, the Matthew reading, Jesus was asked by a scribe, what is the greatest commandment? He instantly replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And he added the second greatest is love thy neighbor as yourself. Love is perhaps the most talked about topic in the whole world. It is our greatest challenge. The joy of life is to love. So today, Lord, we ask you in prayer to bless this world, to love your world during these difficult times. We pray that all of us who believe in you will be strengthened and encouraged to remain faithful to our calling. Amen. This morning, we pray that our lives will be filled with the power of your love so that we can make a difference in this world and bring honour to you. We thank you for the continuing love and the Christian input of the Family Trust, the visit and work with many of our schools in Medway, Swale and Maidstone, including our own All Saints Primary School. Many seeds are sown by their enthusiasm, by their energy, by their love, by the care that they show young children and others during every visit. We thank them, Lord, for their perseverance and for their love. So, Lord, help us to look after the need of others before our own, to be mindful and caring for the sick, to look out for the homeless amongst us, to pray for and remember the refugee, to look out for the friendless, and to pray for the bereaved. We pray for our families, for every relationship that is dear to us, to forgive hurts that in your mercy you would guard our time on earth. We continue to pray for the Queen, that she continues in strength and in good health so that she steadfastly rules over our sovereign country. We also pray for our church here in England today and for the Church of England throughout the whole world. We pray for our places of work, for our schools and for our community and for the work of the Magpie Centre and for the Magpie Food Bank. Also to pray for Marcus Rashford in his quest to support free meals for children in need at half term. We continue to pray for those in authority, for leaders throughout the world, that you would give them the wisdom and discernment that they take difficult decisions, let their actions be considered, to be kind and loving. We remember in particular the people of the United States of America as the election for a new president takes place next week. Dear Lord, in these troubled times, let us pray for the unity of the land, that your arms of love and compassion are spread to all people, whether they're in tier one, tier two, tier three, to the people of Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland. We pray that your great love for us reaches all homes throughout the our island and throughout your earth. Give us the courage to spread your word of love and concern to our neighbour throughout the world. Our time at present and always is in your hands. Let us love the Lord with all of our heart and to love our neighbour as ourselves. We turn to you, Lord, again and again and trust in your kindness, your compassion and your love to welcome us home. Amen.
Thank you very much, Stuart. I think I, am I on? Yes, thank you, Stuart. Good old prayers. So just uh, before our uh, blessing, um, a few notices to mention this morning, um, a number of things to, uh, to say. So um, we had our annual meeting last Sunday, and uh, um, the election results are in our newsletter, but uh, just to say that um, uh, our new church wardens are Linda and Elizabeth, uh, which is uh, great news. Thank you, Linda and Elizabeth, um, and uh, Bruce and uh, Rachel, our new PCC members, uh, and Stuart is our Deanery Synod uh, representative. So uh, my thanks to all of you um, for standing um, and for uh, serving the church in this way. So uh, um, that's good news. Um, also, just to mention uh, that um, at the moment, we've been live streaming uh, our service, but not live streaming Holy Communion, but from November, uh, so from the second Sunday in November, which will be Remembrance Sunday, um, we will be live streaming uh, the Holy Communion part of the service as well. So just so that uh, everyone, if you're at home, you know that uh, from November, we'll be able to join in um, uh, in that part of the service uh, and very much kind of receiving the Lord in your hearts at home as you uh, join in at that point. Um, next Sunday, of course, is our All Around the Altar service. So that's a uh, uh, service that's from at home. <laughs> I'm having a shake of a head at the back there. No, no, it's, we're in October. <laughs> so fifth Sunday in November. But next Sunday is the first Sunday of November. I'm not going mad, am I? No, that is right, yeah. <laughs> You're ahead of yourself by a month, Bruce. <laughs> so uh, next Sunday is the All Around the Altar service um, at 10.30, uh, which we all watch from um, home. Um, and also to mention uh, that next Saturday, um, so that's uh, October the 31st, uh, there's the opportunity um, for our families uh, with children under 11 to join in with uh, our Glow in the Dark, All Saints Glow in the Dark praise party. We've partnered with Doug Hawley, uh, Dougie Doug Doug, and his hilarious puppet uh, co-presenter, Rolls. So um, that's going to be available on our Facebook page or the website from 10 o'clock next Saturday. Uh, so an opportunity to celebrate at the light um, on Obviously, what is usually often celebrated as Halloween, we're celebrating uh, the light. Um, so uh, do join us uh, for that any time from 10 o'clock next Saturday. You can watch that. And, of course, today, uh, for those of you um, with children who are under 11, uh, we have our online, our recorded resource that Kirsty and Sue and Linda have put together. Uh, it's wonderful, a real opportunity for our children to... Uh, continue growing and learning in faith. Um, so do, if you're at home, do have a look at that. And again, that's available on our Facebook uh, page. And still continuing sort of the online theme, um, there is last year, you may remember, we won the Deanery uh, a Tear Fund Quiz. Um, I don't know whether, is there anybody on the team who's here? Oh, Alan, you were on the team, weren't you? Yes. Oh, and Elizabeth. Um, so uh, we'd love to win again, wouldn't we, this year? Now, it's going to be online um, this year, and details, all the details are in the uh, newsletter, and that's taking place on the 14th of November. Um, you have to register, okay, if you want to take part in that. Um, so do have a look uh, in the newsletter uh, for details of that. Um, let's try to see whether there's anything else I need to mention. No, I think that's... Uh, that's all. Oh, yes, this afternoon um, at four o'clock, we have a very short uh, Holy Communion service again for families with children who are under 11. Um, so it's, it's about 25 minutes, half an hour, here at four o'clock, a very simple service uh, for families who would like to join us for that. 
So our live stream service is uh, coming towards an end now. Um, but do remember, those of you at home, that at noon uh, there is the opportunity to uh, catch up over a copy, coffee uh, on Zoom. Um, so uh, details have been sent out to you for those who'd like to join in that time. So our final prayer. You are called and loved by God the Father and kept safe by Jesus Christ. Mercy, peace and love be yours in abundance from God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, farewell to folks uh, at home and uh, look forward to uh, joining in with our All Around the Altar service next week and then our live stream Holy Communion service the following week. <laughs>